In this video I'm going to explain how Zapier works. Uh, I'm going to touch on some of the concepts behind Zapier, uh, why you might want to use it, um, and I'm going to use an example which is getting data from Acuity Scheduling, which is a, like an online scheduling software, into PushPress. So this particular example shows how to push data into PushPress. I'm going to assume that you already have a Acuity account, a Zapier account, and a PushPress account. So I have a few tabs open here. Um, we have our PushPress account, uh, Zapier account, I'm logged into all of these, and uh, how you schedule your online appointments with Acuity. Okay, the first step is um, creating a Zap. Uh, a Zap is what gets the data from one uh, software application to another. Um, so we, that's kind of the bulk of this tutorial, and we're going to set that up now. So we're going to go ahead and click make a zap. Um, and so you have, if you look at the left column, you have this, this concept of a trigger and an action. So in this case, uh, the trigger is going to be when someone schedules something in Acuity. Um, so first I need to select that. So that'll come up here. Um, and then there's different ways to trigger it. So for this example, I'm just going to select a uh, new appointment. So when someone creates a new appointment, I want to push that data into PushPress. All right, so I select that. Um, and now it's going to ask me to connect my Acuity account. So I'm going to do that. Um, it pops up a little pop-up. Um, so I'm going to put in my Acuity login info, if I can remember that. Okay, so you can see now I've connected this. Um, I can run a quick test, successful, and we're going to continue. Um, so now it says make sure you have at least one recent appointment created. So I'm going to switch to my appointment scheduler tab, which is this. And this is how you'd post a link to this online. Um, so let's see if I put this in. I want to select an email that won't bounce. So that's pretty simple from the acuity end. Like I've just booked an appointment um, for Monday, January 23rd. So I'm going to go back to Zapier and now I can test this step. All right, and we can, so they've pulled in that data and we can have a look at it and we'll have a look down here We'll see it's scheduled on my calendar. This is this is the person that got entered um, with their data, right? So at this point, Zapier has this data, which is good. I'm going to hit continue. Okay, the action step is now um, how do we get that data from Zapier into PushPress? So we want to connect to PushPress. It should show up here. Um, and the action we want to do is because we created a new appointment, we want to create a person. And now it's asking us to connect um, our PushPress account. So uh, this little window is going to pop up and you need to get your PushPress API key to do this. Um, so I'm going to flip back over to PushPress um, and that will be in settings, integrations, and it's going to ask for the public key, so I'm going to copy that, paste that in there, and then it's also going to want the secret key, <coughs> and we'll paste that in there, and hit continue. Um, and now if I flip back to Zapier, it will reflect on there, and so I'm going to test that to make sure we're connected okay, we are. So we can save and continue that. Um, now this is the part which maps up fields in Acuity um, to the fields that we're looking for in PushPress. So 
we're going to look through this. Uh, so let's look at email. So we want to make sure that it's matched up to your email. Um, first name. Scroll this up here. Uh, last name. And you might not end up using all these fields. Um, it just depends on what data the application you're connecting uses. So when I signed up for Acuity, it only asked for first name, last name, and email, uh, and phone number. So those are the, the key things we want to get in here. Um, is this personal lead? So this is optional, um, but in this case, I'm going to say yes because I'm setting up a, in this use case, I'm setting up a, um, you know, first time appointment type thing. So I do want them to be a lead. Uh, we don't, we didn't get any address information from Acuity, so we're going to skip over that. Uh, but we did get the phone number, so that should be in here. Um, also, like note, these are all the things that Acuity sends over, right? So it's going to be different depending on which application you're connecting, right? But so they have a lot of kind of appointment specific stuff, all right? Um, date of birth, we don't have that information, or the gender. Um, we do actually have the lead source um, because we know it's from Acuity, um, but I'm not sure if any of these make sense for that, so we'll skip that. Um, and we don't have that, so I'm going to hit continue. So this will show the data that's getting sent across, email with their name and their lead um, with their phone number. And these are the, the bits of data that we don't have. Okay, so in theory, that just um, created a new person uh, and pushed that into push press. So we can go and test that by going back to push press. Um, and where will it be? It'll be in our lead section, hopefully. And there he is, right down here, testing the test face. So that's already pushed that first test data in there. So if we go back to Zap here, I'm going to finish that. I'm going to want to name it. Um, so I'll call it like new, uh, new member appointment. And I'm going to turn it on. All right, uh, and that's it. We can see it on our dashboard. Um, we have the zap here. It's a new member appointment. Step is just testing this uh, one final test in the real world. So if I go to my appointment scheduling page, which I'll probably link off my website, uh, let's go and select something here. Um, we're going to put in a new person here. We'll say it's Johnny. Oops. Change his phone number a little bit, change his email a little bit, and we'll complete that appointment. Alright, so that's now, in theory, sent that, uh, create a new member on PushPress, put them in the lead funnel, um, and obviously does all the other things that PushPress does, like email you guys um, when you've got a new member. So if I go back over to, um, oh this is important for testing actually. So if I go back to Zapier, what I might want to do is um, run these apps because with a free trial account um, or the low tier account, they run every 15 minutes. So I'll hit this run. Uh, looks like it's found a new one and then it's sent it. Um, but in, in the real world, if you just wait 15 minutes, it'll, it'll automatically do that. And you can obviously pay more money to Zapier if you want them to go through instantly. Uh, so, but this is helpful for testing. So now if I go back to my PushPress account and I'm going to reload that page, you can see that Johnny McTest's face is now in here too. And just to wrap it up, uh, that was an example of how to get data into PushPress. Um, try and think of this as, uh, you know, you could, you could have all different kinds of marketing lead sources um, using different services and as long as they connect to Zapier then we can Zapier that data right into your PushPress account 
to avoid all that double entry. Um, and you can also use this kind of lead, this basic lead funnel that we have um, for managing those new leads.